Guys, welcome to another edition of the Express Online. My name is Vince SP and I'm your host. We are also getting into our feature called um, the Inside 101. The Inside 101. And today I have the good doctor. I always call him the good doctor, Dr. Rosh Mamabolo. And, you know, we, we, we are unpicking issues of entrepreneurship. Today we're looking into a topic which is uh, pricey, entrepreneurship, and pricing, but before we can uh, get into it, let me introduce the good doctor. Sir, greetings to you. Uh, good, day. good day. How are you? How are you, Vince? Thanks for I'm having me. I'm good, man. I'm good, man. <laughs> awesome stuff. Leader, from the last talk, the issue about underpricing and uh, overpricing tobacco, uh, is yes. it a big issue amongst entrepreneurship? I mean, entrepreneurship? Yeah. It, 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 it's a big issue. Thanks for having me, Vince. It's a big issue because pricing affects affects your cash flow, right? Mm. Um, and uh, we know that the biggest challenge with entrepreneurs, especially startups, is is cash flow uh, or the lack of resources, meaning the lack of of funds. So you know. It's a big issue um, where you have a situation where entrepreneurs don't know where to start when they price their products or services. Um, and, and it's a big issue because there's a science to pricing and there's an art to pricing. Um, the science is the normal accounting, you know, how uh, costing and price sizing. How, do you, how much does your product cost you? And, and how are you pricing it? The art to it is, you know, how do you deal with different packages that you offer your customers? Um, you know, specials and um, bulk discounts and, and settlement discounts, you know. So, so, so there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a science to, to pricing and there's an art to pricing. But it's a big issue. To answer your question, it's a big issue because a lot of entrepreneurs don't know how. Cash flow, bookkeeping are a big challenge for a lot of entrepreneurs when it comes to, when it comes to um, their, their businesses. Entrepreneurs tend to focus more on the features and benefits of their products. Mm -hmm. But very rare do they focus on, you know, is this the right price point? Um, am I making a profit? Am I breaking even? What is my break-even number? You know, so so yes, it's a big issue, but but it's a big issue. But I don't think entrepreneurs appreciate the issue that it is. Mm. Does this affect also like there are those type of entrepreneurs who only do one thing, right? Uh, maybe like who sell only one product. And there is that type of, of an entrepreneur who sell all these mixed up products. Does mm -hmm. it affect both of them or that one, one, the one who sell one product, it, there isn't any much issue with, with that. Or they go through the challenges. Look, I mean, if it's one product, um, the issues are the same. If it's multiple product, the same issues are multiplied, yeah. right? So, 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 if you have one product, you still have to understand your costing and pricing, and there are challenges there. If you have multiple products, those challenges of one products are multiplied. So, so if you have more products, you need to still do a costing and pricing exercise for each product. Mm. The difference, though, with multiple products is because you've got multiple products, they are likely to share the same cost structure. So mm. if you have five products, they are sharing the same salary of the entrepreneur. If you've got multiple products, they are sharing the same rent. They are sharing pretty much the same input costs. Uh, uh, and now you need to be able to allocate the rent for the premises that you are using to five mm. products. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so so hence I say if it's five products, it's multiple problems or multiple challenges. 
But um, if you get, if you, if you understand the principle of one product, it becomes easier to replicate uh, the, those principles in one product into the other four products, you know, because okay. especially if the product is of the same nature, right? You are mm. able to say, this is, say maybe you have, you're selling shoes, for instance, but you've got different types or designs of shoes. The input costs are pretty much similar. The only difference might be here and there. So if you know how to cost and price for one pair of shoes, uh, you can use the same philosophy to do the other pairs of shoes. The only mm. difference, obviously, they might be different in design, they might be different in color, and they might be mm. different in packaging. But I, I, I find that when I deal with entrepreneurs, this is a very difficult topic to touch on because if you ask entrepreneurs, how do you price your products? Most of the time, um, they look at what my neighbor is charging, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and, and if my neighbor is charging 10 rand, I'm going, because I want to compete with my neighbor, I'm going to charge nine rand, mm. right? And mm. then someone else comes next door and they say, okay, this one is charging 10 rand, this one is charging nine rand. Um, and I want to compete with both of them, I'm, I'm going to charge eight rand. So it becomes a race to the bottom, right? Yeah. It becomes um, a race we'll to be the bottom. Uh, randa because yeah. the manatura. Yes. And you know what happens when you, you know, when you win a race to the bottom, there's a chance that you'll be out of business, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's why you find, Vince, that if you go to street hawkers, for instance, <coughs> they sell more or less the same product at the same price and they sell it the same way, right? I have a yeah. stand, I'm selling fruits and veg and, and I package them this way and the price is this way. You go to the next store, uh, you know, stand, the same products packaged the same way, sold at the same price. But if mm. you ask the neighbor, how did you come to that price? The neighbor's reference is going to be, I looked at what my guy next to me is charging his products and I charged it the same way. So if he's doing it this way, I'm also going to do it the same way. And you find that that is not necessarily the right way to price because you don't know where your neighbor got his products from. Maybe your mm. neighbor is a network of 10 people and they club together and they buy in bulk and he got discount and that's why he's charging it at eight rand and he's still making a profit because he's buying as part of a network with him and his friends or with him and his family members. And there's 10 of them, they put money together and they go to the wholesale and they buy in bulk and they get discounts. Now you come, you don't have that benefit of a network. again, mm. And, mm. and you go alone to the wholesaler, you buy alone, you don't get the bulk discounts, right? And you come next to your neighbor Right, and you say he's charging he's charging eight rand. I'm going to charge eight rand as well, but he's profitable because he bought this thing at six rand because he, they bought it as a bulk discount. You bought it at ten rand, right? Because you went mm. there alone, you went there alone, and then you come in, you sell it at eight at eight rand, and you're making a loss, and you don't understand why your business is not sustainable. So those are some of the challenges that entrepreneurs don't understand that you need to look before you can put up a price you need to look at what your cost structure is like yeah because taking taking advice from competitors is going to end up i mean uh, you know you are going to end up being out of business i mean how many stall smokers we have seen them you know being erected the next thing they're no longer there and then you ask why or no but then the person was selling the same as uh you know uh, neighbor high the next thing you're now away yeah yeah, because because we don't understand the cost, the costing and pricing of our business. We price not taking into account the costs of how it got, how much it cost us to to produce this thing. Let me give you another example, right? On the yeah. same challenge, what you find, for instance, if I'm charging eight rand for my product, um, entrepreneurs don't include salaries in their costing and pricing. Right. They hardly do. They hardly they, do. You know, so, so you find that um, they get frustrated when, the, when they are not able to make money 
because they have not factored into their pricing their own salaries. Now, maybe as a start, they charge a rand, right? People come and buy the product. The demand grows, right? And as the demand mm. grows, what happens? You have to employ people because you can't meet the demand all by yourself. Now, when you employ people, they come into your business. Those people need to be paid, right? But in your eight rent pricing, you did not include their salaries, right? Then you're mm -hmm. sitting with a problem. Then you're sitting with a problem because you are in a situation where you have to employ people to meet demand. The people that are employing have to be paid a salary. You did not include the salary factor in your eight rent price, right? Then you have a situation where because there's demand, you then have to increase from eight rand to 15 rand because there are people that you have employed. And those people are not like you. They're not going to work for free. They need to be paid. No, no. So, so you have that challenge where entrepreneurs don't include salaries into their, their setting price and, and, and they compromise themselves. And because you are cheap, people are going to come and buy from you. And, uh, and you find that you, your cost structure increases. You need a bigger premises, which means more rent. You need to employ people, which means salaries. You need to buy a delivery buggy, which means petrol. And those things, you did not include them when you started at 8 rent. Now, suddenly you are under pressure to increase your selling price. And people are going to complain to say, no, but why are you increasing the price? No, I'm going to look for someone else cheaper, right? Because we have used cheaper as a way to compete. And we don't realize that sometimes cheaper might actually be something that drives you out of business. And I'm not saying be expensive, but I'm saying understand what co your cost structure, because we call it costing and pricing, because costing comes before pricing, before you set the price. So mm -hmm. you need to understand your cost first, and then add a markup to get to your selling price. Mm. Yeah, no, this is very much interesting, leader. How do we get it right then? How do we get the, uh, the pricing right as entrepreneurs? So, 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 so you start with your costing, like I said, right? So you start with your costing. You need to understand what are the costs, all the costs, the relevant costs that, that, that you incur or that you have to pay. Remember, a cost is something that you pay right? So all the costs that you have to pay uh, uh, to get your product to, to be ready for, for sales. If you go to, to the fresh produce market to buy, right? Transport costs, for instance, is important. Packaging is important, right? Uh, the cost of the stock is important. So you take all these costs, right? And you, and you calculate, you get the receipt, you put all these costs down and you say, okay, this is how much it costs me to get these products to here, right? And say, for instance, this costs um, uh, uh, amount to six rand, for instance, right? So you've added all these costs and you have divided them into the quantities that you have produced. And you are able to get, for instance, six rand as, as a cost per product. Right, mm. so so you're sitting with six rent as a cost per product, and, and and how do you get to six rent as a cost per product? Say for instance, you go to uh, Pretoria, uh, you get into a taxi, or you've got petrol. You get into your car, you put petrol. You go to a fresh produce market, you buy uh, 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 fruits. You come home, and the, and and all this exercise costs you uh, six sixty bucks, as an example. <clears throat> It costs you 60 rand. And then you're sitting with about 10 packages of fruits and veg, small plastics of fruits and veg, right? Say fruits, yes. right? banana, apple, and whatever in a plastic. And you get 10, 10 uh, of these uh, products. Remember, it costed you 60 rand, the whole exercise of going to buy, coming back, mm. and you mm. all it costs you 60, 60 rand. And then you've got 10 packs of, of apple, orange, and banana. You take 60 rand, divide by 10. Again, it gives you six rand. So in other words, each pack, 10 of them, it's six rand. And then what you then do, right? You say, okay, it costs me, each plastic costs me six rand. 
Now you understand your costing, right? Now get into your sales. The sales mm. is, what is my sales strategy, right? Sales strategy says, okay, mm. you go Hamas Kral, for instance. People go Hamas Kral, what is their um, uh, 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 income per capita? In other words, what LSM, talking in marketing terms, are these the higher LSM people yeah. or are these the lower LSM people, right? If they mm. are like mm. the lower mm. LSM people, unemployed type of people, then you're going to say my sales strategy is going to be that I have to charge less because the people in my area can't afford high prices, right? Then what you then say says, okay, yeah. it cost me six rand mm. to manufacture this thing. Uh, maybe I can charge eight rand for it because the people in my community can afford to pay a rand. And I can still afford to make a profit because it costs me six rand. So I can sell it at eight rand because uh, my LSM can afford this. But if you are doing this exercise in Santin, for instance, right? You're doing this exercise in Santin. Mm. People in Santin are a higher LSM. So you can afford, you can still say, mm. I'm gonna charge eight rand and, and still make a profit. But you can still get away with charging 25 rand in, in Santin because people in Santin True. can afford to pay 25 rand. So, but the first thing that you do is understand what your cost structure is. Understand how much does it cost me to produce one of these products. And then say, what is my sales strategy? All right. Am I doing price penetration or am I doing uh, price skipping? In other words, am, am I charging the highest price? or am I charging the lowest price? And that decision of charging either the highest price or the lowest price will be determined by the market around you, will be determined by, am I creating an expensive brand or am I creating a no-name brand, but that's affordable to the people, right? So if I go mm. to Santin, mm. for instance, and I say, I'm going to charge 25 rand for my packet of fruits and veg, the people at Santin are brand conscious, right? So the packaging mm -hmm. of your fruits and veg needs to be, they need to have a brand. It needs to be sexy. It needs to be sophisticated because the people, it may be the same product. Yeah. Yeah. It may be the same product, but how you package it at Santin, it needs to be used up and je ne sais quoi, right? Because the people at Santin, they want <laughs> that sexy, right? The people at uh, yeah, at, uh, yeah. Majani, for instance, Bros Plus, for instance, they don't care about the brand. They just want something that is affordable, right? Can I afford this thing now? Yeah, yeah. right. And that's why you'll find, yeah. for instance, if you go to, if you go to uh, Usave in, in uh, I know there's Usave next to where you are. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the one with the container, right? You go there. Yeah. You are likely to have no name brands. Right, they're likely to have mm -hmm. no name brands in that you save. But if you go to Shoprite Hyper in Santin, Santin City, right, you, you there will be no name brands, but very few, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, you are not going to get, and, and I'm not saying this in an offensive way, <clears throat> you're not going to get Jacob's Coffee at, at you save, uh, at Shoprite you save. There's no Joe Jacobs there, you're going to Never. get Frisco, or you're going to get Frisco or, or, or Rico, Rico, right. And maybe like another that. no name, yeah, or maybe another no name brand, uh, uh coffee, uh, at you at you save. So, 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 so the, so the pricing strategy, right, comes into effect when you look at the market around you, right? Because mm. you need to be sensitive to the market around you. If the market around you is in such a way that they can't afford high prices, it makes no sense. For you for ShopRite to say we're going to put ShopRite Hyper, go 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 Temba Mall, right? It makes no sense mm. because mm. ShopRite Hyper is their prices are a bit high, right? Yes. You you know you are, you are unlikely to find Woolworths, for instance, in, in those type of areas in poor communities because Woolworths prices are likely to be higher than the people can afford. So, to answer your, your question. Where do you start? You start with your costing and pricing. You need to understand how much it costs you to put up this thing, right? And then once mm. you have a good understanding of how much it costs you to put up this thing, then the next day is what is my sales strategy? 
right? With the people yeah. around me, how do I want to be a brand or do I want to be a commodity, right? Can people around mm. me afford higher prices or can they afford low prices? And you start looking at those. And based on what you find, then you, you, you then work out the price, the selling price. But the selling price always has to be above the cost of, of your product. But there's different right. strategies, Vince. Like, for instance, you'll have a situation where um, when Kulula came into the market, for instance, um, and it was a low-cost carrier, right? So I mm. want to fly to Cape Town. Um, you know, I'm a student. I want to fly to Cape Town. I study go UCT, for instance. I don't have... I don't want to get into a bus and sit on the bus for 20 odd hours uh, on, on my way to Cape Town. And the bus ticket cost me 350. And then come Kulula. Kulula says, no, to fly from here to Cape Town, it can cost you 700 rand. Eh, 700 rand. I, I can talk to my uncle, I can talk to my aunt, to come and, say, and get my ticket to fly to Cape Town. But the thing mm. with Kulula, because it's a low cost carrier, they don't have chicken or beef right? Mm, um, mm. You pay for your own chicken or beef there, right? So, mm. so, so what happens is SAA, which was charging higher prices from here to Cape Town, they will charge you 1,600, for instance, right? SAA yeah. looks at this thing and SAA says to themselves, oh, oh, what do we do? Do we also reduce our prices or, or what do we do? Or do we keep our prices high and we focus on the high NSM? What SAA does is say, no, 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 no. We're not going to go up and down, increasing and decreasing our prices. We are going to introduce a different brand that is going to target the lower, that is going to compete mm. with Kulula. So what do yeah. they do? They introduce Mango, right? Mm. Mango mm. competes with Kulula at the bottom of the pyramid. SAA keeps their prices as, as, as high because a, SAA is competing with British Airways, is competing with Emirates, competing with all these other guys. So they're saying mm. we're going to keep our price high, but we want to also compete at the bottom. We are going to introduce a different brand that's at the bottom. So if you're an entrepreneur, right, and you want to target both the high LSM and the low LSM, the low. you want to come up with different brands. So you'll have ShopRite Hyper at Santin, and you have shop right you save for guys in okay. the township, right? Nice. And those two yeah. have different. If you go to shop right hyper, for instance, it I mean the shop itself, the lighting, the furniture, and the aisles are sophisticated. You go to shop right you save the aisles are like this thing. You gotta if you are two in an aisle, you have to move like this because <laughs> because because the aisles are because the structure is small, right? Yeah. If you are pushing yeah. a trolley. In ShopRite, you say, it's going to be a problem if there's two of you in the <laughs> aisle, right? Because True. they're trying to save costs. So the aisles are yeah. too squashed. There's no name brands. There's no fruit and veg section there, mm -hmm. right? Mm. So, 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 so what ShopRite is doing is they're saying, we want to charge the high price, but we're going to offer a sophisticated product. But also, we want to charge the low price. We're going to introduce a different brand that's going to also have its own um, uh, pricing structure. <clears throat> nice. Nice. Leader, you also answered me regarding the, you know, rural and urban area, you know, regarding that, uh, you know, that in terms of, you know, putting prices from this to that. So you have also covered that yes. area as well. Now, yes. petrol is a problem. Petrol in our country is a problem. It keeps on increasing on a monthly basis, right? Mm -hmm. How does then how does this thing affect um, the pricing? Does it affect the pricing or not? It definitely does. I mean, you know, transport is the lifeblood of any economy, right? Mm. In order mm. for us to... In fact, there was a study that was done that says um, uh, countries that have got a faster transport mode or that where goods and services are moving at a faster rate tend to be more progressive than countries that have got a very slow transport or very little movement of transport. Mm. So, so, so transport is a big factor in the economy because you have to go buy stock. You need to move products from one place to the next. And um, mm. the movement of products from one place to the next uh, affects your, remember we spoke about understanding your cost structure. How much did it yeah. cost you to go from uh, rest town to to, to a produce market, first produce market. 
and and the petrol, the, the petrol or the taxi fee or whatever, um, and come back and buy stock. So all that costs you need to put into and factor it into your cost per product. So petrol price increasing, it increases your cost structure, right? Mm. And petrol price reducing, it reduces your cost structure. So, 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 so yes, definitely, it affects your cost structure. As the petrol price increases, it becomes more expensive for you to go and buy your products and you to bring them to your doorstep, to your business. But someone else can say, no, but I mean, I don't go to uh, uh, first produce to go buy. Yeah. But, but, but the effect of the matter is the, the people who are supplying you have to move somewhere around. If they come mm. and deliver to your products, it costs them because they come to you as the petrol price increases, they are going to shift that increase to you, mm. as the, you know, and then mm. the honors is on you to shift that increase to your customers, right? So, yeah. so, so absolutely, it affects your cost structure because it increases your cost structure, which means you also need to increase your selling price to your customers. So how do you do this? I mean, do you do it every time petrol price increases? or not. So what you then have to do is you need to factor into to say, if I'm going to increase my price this year, I'm going, I need to increase my price in such a way that I factor into that maybe one or two petrol price increases. So that if there's a petrol price increase, I don't have to increase my price again. I factor mm. that into my setting price. So I can keep my price as they are. And if there's another petrol price increase, maybe in the second quarter or so, I can still be profitable. I'm not going to increase my price, but I'll increase my price annually and I'll increase them next year. Unless if the petrol price increases in such a very ridiculous way that yeah. you don't have a choice but to increase your price. So in your pricing, you always have to uh, factor into, into your pricing things like petrol price and things like that. So that mm. if they happen, you don't have to also increase your prices, but you can still keep your price the same and maybe for the next six months, uh, see if there's another in petrol price increase, you might then say, guys, I don't have a choice, but I have to I also have to increase. increase. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, leader. Now talk to me about this, uh, you know, ideas of doing the combo specials in your business, uh, the sales, you know, birthday celebration. Hey, it's a birthday. I mean, I know one, one shop every three months, you know, they run specials every, every three months. Is it a good idea to say, you know what, let's also, you know, have this uh, uh, ideology in our, in our selling system where we have, you know, the combo specials, where we have the birthdays, where we create, you know, all these sales, all these deals. Do they work long term? Okay, <clears throat> so let's go back, right? So I'm going to sort of as I answer your question, sort of show you where the answer to your question fits. So, yeah. so we spoke about, you need to understand your cost structure, right? You need to yeah. be able to factor into account all the costs, your salary, transport, and everything. And then you come up with the cost structure. And then the next is you come up with the sales strategy. Am I targeting the higher NSM or am I targeting the lower NSM? And based on what you want to do, you come up with, you come up with your strategy. Okay, I'm going to introduce two brands. One is going to target the higher LSMs and the other brand is going to target the lower, whatever you decide, right? So you have set the price, you have set the cost, you know the cost, you have set the selling price and, and the selling price is out there. You advertise, you make noise. This is how much we sell this at, at so much, right? Now, the next step now is to sort of say, okay, I know what my cost is. I know what my selling price is. Now I need to start talking about creating awareness. I need to start talking about creating customer loyalty. I need to mm. talk about advertising and marketing my product, right? Now this is where things like your, your bulk discounts comes in because you are in a way trying to create awareness. You are in a way trying to market your business. And then part of marketing your business is to say, if you buy one, you get one free. Right. Mm. But mm. but you can't just say buy one, get one free if you don't know 
your cost and your cost structure and your selling price. Because buy one, get one free basically says instead of you buying one at 44 rent, buying another one at four rent, and you're paying eight rent, you buy one at maybe say seven rent and you get one for free. But you know, based on your cost structure, that even at seven rent, you are making a profit of both the products. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So 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 and you can afford to to say buy one get one free because you know if I, if someone else buys buys two right that actually you are still making a profit because you know it costs you two rent each right it costs mm. you two rent each so for it's four rent right for both of them you're selling them at seven rent you're making profit of three rent right so yeah. and that's that's the strategy so you use those type of strategies to push your products in such a way that you are marketing, you're creating awareness, right? You are trying to get customer loyalty. I mean, one other thing, for, for instance, I buy quite a lot of books, right? So I have, I'm a club member of exclusive books. So yeah. as I buy books, as I buy books, I earn points, right? Mm. Mm. And there will come a point where they will say to me, uh, Dr. Mamabolo, you have 150 rand. Uh, that you have accumulated in terms of points. You can buy any book that's worth 150 or you can top up if that book is more than 150. What do I do? Mm -hmm. I go out there, I look for a book. If it's 200 rand, I only pay 250 bucks to top up because mm -hmm. I have 150. What does that do? What it does, it says to me, oh, okay, next time if I want to buy a book, I'm not going to go to Amazon. I'm not going to go to Loot or any of these other bookstores, because I don't get the points there. I'm going mm. to exclusive because I know if I go to exclusive books, I'm going to get points. And maybe if I buy four or five books, I'll get one, one book for free. But am I getting that book for free? Of course not. They are taking the profits from those other books that I've bought. And those profits are paying for, 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 for the book that I'm getting for free, right? So it's not that I'm getting the book really for free. But what, it, what this does is it creates a loyal customer that I keep on going there, right? Because I get this discount. When it's my birthday, for instance, I'll get a 70 rand uh, voucher, right? Oh, wow, voucher, birthday, nice. Mm. I'm going to go buy a book, right? If it's their birthday, I know it was their birthday now recently. Um, I got a, there was a, there was a, a, a voucher, but it's also obviously for their club members. What this does yeah. is it, pieces people to want to belong to that club membership so 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 that all those strategies are marketing strategies uh, you know you are trying to build customer loyalty you're trying mm. to build following and all those things so yes absolutely those things are encouraged i would encourage any other entrepreneur to come up with those type of of special so that they're able to create awareness and also uh, i mean membership fee for me membership driven uh, thing buy one get one free uh, if you buy 10 you get one for free and all those things for me those things that work for at laura for instance we, we have this thing that if you come with one person you get 20 percent discount so if you want to register you pay the full amount but if you bring another entrepreneur you get 25% discount, 20% discount. If you are one of our students and you want to register for another program, because you are one of our students, you get a certain amount discount, you know? So, mm. and what that does is it keeps our students on our database actively recruiting other students, but also actively engaging other programs as well, instead of going to another institution to register yeah. for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice one, Rosh. Nice, nice one, Rosh. Now, yeah. Talk to me about installments, right? Yeah, yeah. Because now we're talking about pricing and buying and, you know, cost and everything. I hardly see black people you know, or black entrepreneurs getting into this mode of creating the installments uh, or, or delay buy, for example. Why mm. are we not exploring that, that mode? Is it a dangerous mode? Or are you about already? You are having this business where it is established or it is maybe a difficult thing to put together? I think, um, I, yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Vince. I think it's, you know, I haven't done some work on this thing, but my, my instincts or my suspicion says it's a couple of reasons. One, it might be also the fact that as a startup, you have 
huge cash flow challenges, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so you know, um, every cent counts. So you would mm. want to, you would want to have uh, customers that are paying full amount, you mm. know, um, so that you are able to then go buy stock and do all these other things. Um, but I think also too, you know, the issue of installment is a bit tricky because it's a trust issue. When yeah. I give you this product uh, and, and you have six months to pay, will you come and pay uh, by the third month? Mm. You know? Yeah. So, so there is also that trust issue that I can give you, you can pay the first installment, second installment, and then you vanish. And I can't yeah. find you. Right? So there's also that. I would I would prefer lay buys because I think lay buys, they are able to, you know, you are able to keep ownership of the product and the customer is able to show commitment to the product mm. and they're able mm. to pay every month. The challenge with that model is you might find that entrepreneurs, instead of committing that amount to the product, they might use it for something else. And once the customer is finished paying the 30 months, there's no money to procure mm. the product. You know, so, mm. so, 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 I mean, it's a good question. And I think for me, um, you know, the, the installment is tricky. We also have it with our students where they pay the registration fee and they pay the rest of the fees over six months. But I find that you'll find that there are those who are committed and they'll come and, and they'll attend and they'll pay every month. But there are those who will come, attend, pay first month, second month, third month, and they stop paying, right? Mm. Uh, mm. And they finish the program and they vanish, <laughs> right? Mm. So, mm. so, so, and I always find, and you know, as, as as small entrepreneurs, we don't have the resources to go chase them, send yeah. players on them, uh, blacklist them. It's 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 just a costly exercise. I mean, you're blacklisting someone who owes you a thousand two hundred. A lawyer comes and charges you two thousand, and this whole <laughs> process, it's it's like it's just tedious, you know. And there's five yeah. of the, it's like no man. <laughs> so you find that, you know, the process of chasing people to pay you, you know, it, it tends to be very, it tends to be very, um, uh, I mean, just the cost of vetting the person, doing the credit checks to see, can these people pay, um, you know, uh, what is their credit record? That first yeah. happened to yeah. us is too tedious, you know? So, so they it, don't tend to favor that. I would mm. have, I would have liked to see more and more entrepreneurs saying, um, lay by three months to pay six months to pay but obviously that places the responsibility on the entrepreneur to not eat the money but to use that money for the intended purpose of the lay by so 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 the easiest is 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 fagi maluzo one the easiest is put money i give you your product and simple you know, but it's a simple one um yeah but but i think there needs to be some exploration in terms of lay by because I think that one our parents took us to school by bar lay by the bar or cost nepas and whatever. Mm. Right? Mm. By December Ubiji. when they get the yeah go be you know <laughs> by the time December comes uh, they they use their bonuses to finish <laughs> off uh, to finish off the to finish <laughs> off the school uniform. Come January we are sorted. We don't have issues yeah. with 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 school uniform. So I think that worked. I mean it carried quite it, it carried to these businesses for a very long time. So mm. so yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think I think it, I think it's something the lay by needs to be explored. Installments yeah. maybe not as a startup. Maybe later on when you have got the facilities to when you're established. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and then you know you can hire lawyers to chase people yes. who don't pay and blacklist yes. them. You know, yes. and, you know, outsource. You know. Yeah. My last question goes to you. Would be you touched briefly on this, you know, and I think we can wrap it up. We can wrap up the whole conversation with it. How does an entrepreneur calculate their salary? Okay, good question. And somebody asked me now recently. So, so, so maybe before we say, I mean, the the exercise of calculating a salary for a startup is not that much different from uh, a, a company, an established company, calculating the salary of Vincent because they are about to employ Vincent. That exercise is not that different. Where you start is firstly the industry. If I'm looking for artisans, for instance, uh, you can look at what the industry uh, pays artisans, right? 
so an average uh, um, artisan entry um, artisan who just finished uh, his training, uh, maybe can earn whatever, and they just graduated, no experience, they earn 4,000. But if you're an artisan with two years experience and qualification, you earn 6,000. If you're an artisan with qualification and over 10 years of experience, you earn 10,000, right? So, so mm. that you start with that exercise to see how much uh, people in your industry okay. pay themselves, right? And then mm. from there you get into, okay, I see this is how much everyone else gets paid as a start, and therefore that's what I'm going to look at. But, but also, you're not going to say I'm running a retail shop and I want to benchmark with how much Raymond Ackerman paid himself when he said a, a, a pick and pay or how much yeah. YT person. You can't do that. You need to start looking at, firstly, again, understand your cost structure, understand all the costs that are involved, but also understand what your selling price is and then work out from there how much you can pay yourself, right? So there's all ways of doing this. One, look at what the industry is charging, right? And then work mm -hmm. around to that. Two, look at how much it costs you to maintain yourself. Right, I stay go high. I buy grocery. I pay electricity. I pay transport for my kid. I pay school fees for his uh, for 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 crash. How much do all these things cost me? Cost. Add, yeah. add, 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 add. Okay. After I've added all these things, uh, I need three thousand. Uh, you know, and then maybe my salary can. I don't necessarily need to have expensive suits and go jackala, go di sofa, and go kai kai. I don't need those. Right. So now. With this, that's, this is how much I need for me to keep on running. And then that can also be your salary, right? To say, mm. if I withdraw 3,000 from this business, it covers for my running costs, essentials, right? Mm. Of, mm. of maintaining myself, my toilet, uh, uh, transport, 500, 1,000, and all these things. And then I add them up. The essentials, not the... I need to jack a la go pop a yeah, no, no, yeah. the needs it covers the needs. Yeah. So you work out what your needs are, and then based on the total of amount of your needs, you're then able to say, For me, if I'm going to withdraw a salary from this business, this is how much I'm going to withdraw. Now, the reason why entrepreneurs don't do that exercise is because they swipe business money for personal reasons, right? Yeah, so they don't do this exercise because no, I mean. And the money that's in my business account, my business, this business is my business. Therefore, the money in the business is my money. My money. So I'm going to swipe. I'm going to swipe business account, get a KFC, get a, uh, sorry, get a KFC here, get a, all these other things. So, so, so what you want is you want to be able to say, this is, sorry, uh, sorry, we got cut off, sorry. So, oh, okay. so, so what you want is you want to be able to say, this is how much my running costs are. And therefore, I'm going to have two bank accounts, one for business and one for my personal account. Personal. And I'm yeah. going to withdraw 3,000 from the business account, transfer it into my personal account. Personal. And then I can go jackala and, 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 and swipe and do whatever. 3,000. 3,000. 3,000. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, 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 so there's all these things. So one, you can benchmark and see how much people are earning out there. Two is you can look at yourself and say, how much does it cost to maintain me? Uh, the serious needs, not the ones. And then calculate those and then transfer the money from your business account into your personal account and spend that. Mm, no, it makes perfect sense, Peter. It makes perfect yeah. sense, Peter. Do you, do you offer, do you offer... Uh, uh, all this, what we're talking about, costing and pricing, go, go Laura. Yes, absolutely. Yes, we, we have that as a module. Uh, it's important. I mean, we yeah. understand that entrepreneurs need to understand costing and pricing because, I mean, you know, you are in the business to make money. Um, you know, so, so we, do offer, we do offer costing and pricing as a module at Laura. Um, you know, guys who are interested, www.lorasenter.co.za. Or you can just go Google Laura Center and then you'll find our website. But yes, long story short, yes, we do. Nice, nice stuff. So those who want to 
uh, apply is uh, they can go through your website, which yes. is www.lorasenter.co.za. Yeah. Center gonna give in Gila ya T E T R E. R E, yes. Yeah. And that, hey, there's a problem when it comes to center. Hey, there's a big problem. Yes. yes. <laughs> to ask what uh, you're not yeah. giving, you know. Yeah, so it's also, TRE. Yeah. TRE, yes. Also, any any anything we're looking into TEDx? Are we are we still on virtual virtual events <laughs> or we're going we going you know uh, a meet and greet? You know, we're exchanging business cards. Is that uh, coming up? <laughs> yeah. Look, I I miss the red circle, right? I yeah. miss the red circle, uh, just that feeling of a speaker getting on stage and doing their thing. I miss that. Yeah. So we have started with the with the talks as part of a team. We um, I mean, we just lost one team member due to COVID, so we have been trying to uh, come to terms with that. But we are now starting with with the talks um, for to see what we can do uh, um, end of the year. So we are having our, our meeting also today. So it sounds to me, we'll see how the COVID situation goes. I mean, there's talk of a fourth wave towards the end of yeah. the year. Yeah. So, so we'll see how that goes. Um, my suspicion is it might still be virtual, which is not the same, but it might still be virtual. Um, but um, we'll, see, we'll see how the situation goes. So we'll, we are in the preparation stages. There is something coming, definitely, uh, but we're still in the preparation stages, and we'll know for sure maybe by the end of the by the end of this month um, what type of event we'll be holding. Okay, awesome stuff. And then also, lastly, let us to entrepreneurs. Last yes, time sir. you only showed me one copy. Is it available in stores for those who might want to have their own copies? Uh, they can uh, email me at. Laura, sorry, roj.mamabolo at gmail.com and, and, and they can place an order there and then I will, or they can go to my, to my website, roshmamabolo.com and uh, they can, uh, on my section under my profile, they can place an order for letters to entrepreneurs and then I'll get, I'll get it uh, couriered to them. Okay, okay. Leadership. Thank you so much. I'm sure entrepreneurs work on no grasp when it comes to costing and pricing. And hopefully we can have you for another topic in the future, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vince. And uh, yeah, all the best and keep on doing amazing work. Awesome stuff. Thank you, bye. Hey, tada.